welcome back to another week on the small holding and this week is a slightly different approach to the video i thought i'd show you everything that's going on not just in the kitchen garden so it's monday start of a brand new week i've been to work today so i've physically been in the office so for those of you that don't know stephen and i live here in the northeast of england with our two kids we run our own small holding and we also work full time both of us so i think it's whether or not this will be the horses can hear me <laughs> Whether or not this will be of interest to everybody, anybody, I have no idea, but I thought we'd start doing a little bit of insight as to what it's like on the small holding when you're not just here all day, every day, running it as your full-time job. We have to fit everything around everything else that's going on. So while we've been out today, um, we've had a delivery, which is just there. So that is the hay and straw. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why we've got straw. Um, normally we get shavings as well as straw, which we use for the horses. But this time, given everything that's going on in the world and the cost of everything going up quite so much, uh, we've got straw because to be quite honest, the cost of shavings and the straw is gonna be too much. Now I'll explain to you in just a little bit why we don't want, why we've avoided using just straw in the past. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you might already know that. But for now, the pigs have just started squealing, the horses are running around in circles, so everybody wants something to eat. So I'm gonna go and oblige. Well, that's better, a bit of peace and quiet. So this hay and straw gets delivered um, when we're not here. So one of the things that we find makes life easier is when we moved in, when we moved into the small holding, obviously we didn't know the name of any hay suppliers, any straw suppliers. We were just looking all over the place for who could bring us what and there was delivery costs, etc., etc. But what we found is uh, once we'd found, um, I found this guy on Facebook, uh, he runs his own farm producing hay and straw. They've also got a livery, I think. Um, and all, also they do uh, the shavings that we use for the horses. So historically, once we found him, we currently pay £40 for a large round bale of hay and £25 for straw. That used to be 20 and I think 35 when we first moved in. It's gone up over the last six years. Now that is expensive compared to what some people, other people spend um, or it costs them here in the northeast of England. But there is a balance for us. We don't have, um, excuse the pigs, we don't have our own trailer or anything that we can go and pick up lots of hay or big round bales or anything like that. And we'd have to, if we went and collected it, we'd have to get the small, easy to lift straw square, uh, rectangular bales, but we don't. This gets delivered, everything's included in the cost. Once we'd met the guys a few times and we got comfortable with them, they knew our farm, what we expected, they just now deliver without us having to be there. So one of the things that we found from running your own small holding is really getting to know people, doing favours every now and again for others and, and they get repaid. But the people that deliver our hay and straw, absolutely fantastic. And we've found it cheaper elsewhere, but we haven't yet changed. And I don't think we will, to be honest, because it's peace of mind knowing that the animals are gonna get fed and they're going to get bed, which essentially is where I was coming from about the straw comment. So previously, we've never used um, straw for the horses beds. And the reason for that is because they go through such a big volume of bedding compared to the other animals on the small holding that we said, well, we need something that rots down quite quickly and degrades quickly to put on the garden. 
but not just for to, for getting it on the garden in the next season it's for um the space and also you know we don't want a huge muck heap we're not a full working farm um we've only got a small amount of land so we're setting three and a half four acres that includes the house the veg plot and everything so we don't have a big field or even a paddock that we can set aside for a big unsightly muck heap and we don't really want it to be honest so we've set up the bins for the shavings bales that we've used in the past or are using at the moment which are just these those shavings there um they're not shavings as in wood shavings they are um ripe straw that's been chopped so chopped straw the dried out uh, you know the really dry stuff and it rots down so quickly and that suited us fantastically it's like seven pound a bag something like that and that's cheaper than what you get from um if you go to the big country stores to buy it individually so we do get that delivered now as well so this guy just turns up once a month for me so we don't order like a year's worth of hair straw at the time which some places also do because we don't really have the storage now people think because we've got this big barn that we've got the storage space to have all of this but we don't have tractors and things like that um to be able to come in and stack the bills on top of each other now we did do a funny video once of Stephen trying to do it manually and he did get it done bless him manually and it was so funny but like we don't have seven days that we can set aside to do you know multiple bills of hay and it just wasn't safe because he nearly killed himself but anyway so we don't have the storage space to buy a year's worth and we don't have the finances to, to buy it up front either because, you know, everything is, is not cheap. And that leads me into where we're coming from with some of these videos now. Really getting back to basics this year, um, regardless of what was happening in the world post-COVID. But now things just seem to be going crazy again with, you know, the whole situation with Ukraine and Russia. Prices are going to start going through the roof. So I said to Stephen, really, if we pay £7 for a bale of shavings or £25 for a bale of straw, it might be cheaper to start putting the horses on straw now, even though we don't have the space for a big straw muck heap and we don't want a straw muck heap because it doesn't rot down very quickly, whereas the shavings are go on to the garden like literally the next season. So we, we have them in the winter and then in the following autumn, uh, growing season, um, in the following autumn, they go straight onto the garden. So it's really cost um, and preempting what's going to happen. Our energy price prices are going through the roof. So we are oil fired here. We've got an oil tanker. So it's just astronomical costs. And to fill up our oil tank would be literally thousands of pounds. So again, we can't do that. We're going to have to be more um, considerate about what we're using that for, which we we're always quite good anyway. But, you know, we really need to start clamping down. And electricity as well, everybody's in the same boat. The, the energy crisis that we're going through means our electricity costs have gone up by at least 40% here. Again, we're quite conservative about what we try and use it for, but you know, we haven't had to be that tight in the past. That's changing, so I'm gonna start including some videos on that too. So all this long conversation to say, I've been talking for like six minutes about hay and straw and energy crisis. Um, is we're looking at the straw now as a cheaper option for the horse's bedding. We've always used straw for the other animals bedding really because um, they don't go through it as quickly. And I quite like straw because it's nice and cozy and they can get kind of wrapped up in it in the winter and stuff. Um, but to muck out anyone that's on straw who's got horses knows um, that mucking out can be a, a bit of a disaster. Um, it, it's not easy and you end up with a bit more waste, I think, than, than you might do with the shavings because the shavings are really easy just to pick off the top um, and then deep, uh, take the rest out once a week, twice a week, something like that. Everyone's different. There's no right or wrong answer. So that's just my experience. So what we do, the guys drop these, shav these um, straw bales off and the hay. So we've got four hay and two straw this time. The guys literally pull the wagon up to the door and dump them off say hi to the horses and then they're on the merry way they always um close the gates never had any problem with anything like that and you know we, we could keep an eye on them if we wanted to um but it's all good from that point of view so now what we need to do is get these organized because obviously they can't just stay in the middle of the barn but stephen's out at the minute so i could probably try and do it on my own but why why do i need to when there's two of us and we can do it together so that'll be another tonight job. So typical night on the small holding will, well, now that it's getting light, it's fantastic because we could actually get out here and, I mean, what is that chicken doing? 
now that we can get out here and enjoy the light nights um it's so encouraging it's so inspiring to to get back out and get things done um there is a lot to do i've been sowing seeds this weekend so at some point i'll show you what they look like but for now i need to get this place tidied up everything's been fed i need to go and get lydia our big horse um her tea so she's got her hair but she's getting on bless her and she also has some additional um hard feed as we call it so i need to get that made up and check the waters for everybody. The pigs have a tendency at the moment to uh, play with their water, which means that it gets spilt quite quickly. Um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask us about running the small holding while working full time, um, people have lots of different things and I can preempt some of those, but I'd like to make it interactive. I love reading the comments. So please leave us a comment and ask any questions that you want. Um, if we can, and if we want to answer them, obviously if they're not too personal, <laughs> then we'll absolutely do that. And for now, I'm going to go grab the horse's tea, get that made up and uh, have a little look around the veg plot before the sun goes down. Um, it's about half five, something like that. It was about 20 past six when the sun went down the other night. It was still light, but you know where it's that kind of awkward light and you can't really see properly. Anyway, so a typical night on the small holding, lots of different things to get done. Um, I forgot to get the meat out the freezer for tea as well. So that's busy sitting on the agar defrosting. And that's another conversation about the oil and the agar. Not too sure what to do there. Oh, by the way, I'll talk about that in a minute or another time. Um, the pigs were due to go out yesterday, Sunday, but it was down to minus three overnight last night. And we thought that sending them out from um, a nice warm barn, or at least protected barn, um, to live outside in minus three on the first night was a little bit harsh. So they're still in here, uh, but they were expecting to be out this this weekend so the first weekend in march they're doing fantastic absolutely fantastic we've got a second video that we're um we're working on on that so i'll get that up soon too or it might already be out depending on how long this takes me to edit right i'm gonna crack on i need to get two liters of water to make up the horse's tea um because she has like a soaked mash so it's nice and easy for her to chew i thought i'd give you an update of what's going on in the greenhouse there's a little bit coming through um i did take some stuff inside last night the um brassicas so all my tomatoes and peppers are in the propagator in the house and I took the brassicas, so the, the cauliflower. Well, the blooming cauliflower didn't come off, so I need to get some more of those sown. Lots of cabbages and uh, broccoli and things like that. They're in the house keeping, not warm because it's not really that warm where they are, um, but not as cold as it's been getting in the greenhouse. Now we're due to get down to zero freezing again tonight. So I'll leave those in there, but everything else that's in here, that'll show you now, it's doing okay. So these are just some watermelon radish. So they'll be going probably into the polytunnel. I've got some nasturtium, which we use uh, the leaves for making teas. Um, sweet peas and the echinacea has not come up, but okay. We've got broad beans. Some are coming up faster than others. Some might have rotted um, in there. And that's, you know, we've got, we'll sow some more. This is Securo spinach. So these will get pricked out individually because I'm not sure. There's a little bit early sowing these but I thought I would give it a go anyway. And then there's more broad beans at the back. These are the um, Hearst, what's it called? Green shaft or something like that, peas. I've totally butchered that name, but they're looking okay. And then these were sown yesterday. These are all different types of onions. Uh, so there's Ilsa Craig, Santero F1, and a red Brunswick. The others are your standard onions. And then if we just go into here, the leeks doing okay so these were the uh, mussel bra and the blue de soles and um, some of these took a lot longer to come up than the mussel bra and they're clearly uh, not as viable seeds as the other ones and here we've got radish lettuce all different bits of greens going on here which we'll be able to enjoy and i did sow some um spring onions here now i think they've just dried out too quickly so i'm going to get some more of those done because the greenhouse has actually been getting really hot during the day and i haven't come in and kept watering these especially at the the germinating stage so i'm going to give those a little water now in fact i'll go and get the the liter bottle and refill it for the horse um and this is the fig tree this will be getting potted on but look good stuff yeah, looking well. This was a B&Q special. Um, got that cheap, I can't remember how much. Right, over here, excuse the dogs. These are the Real Seeds onions, so the Paris overwintering. This was a rescue from the garden. 
not sure what's going to happen there and i think this was leaf celery but again not sure what's happening but i brought it in just in case can't remember what's in these but i don't want to bin them because i feel like something's going to come up this was a pineapple sage which i think might be dead but again same situation here and there's a couple of herbs down here parsley i think that's oregano and these two here are strawberry mint which i thought were done for but but can you see this if i smell that for you because you can't that smells of strawberries and mint and the same for this little bit here so these guys are going to come back so i'm thrilled about that so i'll chop down all of this dead wood once once they start coming coming through thick and fast and they will end up going back outside and these are the blueberries which i haven't touched so yeah we've got life happening pleased Something's disturbed them. It's like something off a horror movie. <laughs> right, while that tea's soaking, so um, the mash for the horse takes like five minutes to soak or something. Well, however many minutes, not long. I'm just going to have a little look around and show you what's going on. Not a plot to or anything like that, just a quick look around while I've got a few minutes before I head inside and get our tea made. Every gardener's just got a weed bucket. <laughs> this is mine waiting to be emptied. You're going to have to excuse the cause. Something's clearly happening. This is red clover, which I know just can grow for free, but I actually wanted to grow this again, just for teas and things. Um, rogue chicken shouldn't be out. And then these are all just nice and tidy. This is blackcurrant. And then this is a cranberry bush here. Uh, we haven't had anything off either of these this year. This, the, the very young. And this is what the inside of the polytunnel is looking like at the moment. So I've got strawberries that are ready to go in down the bottom. This bed is empty and waiting for whatever I decide to put in it. I think, you know, the usual quick growing crops initially. And same for these, these just need tidying out. And then we've got a bed that's clearly yet to be done. Um, everything that's come out of here has gone into there and we're just gonna rake all of that and get that put and get that put on the composts. Now this is the pineapple sage that was absolutely awesome last year. Um, don't know if it survived because I didn't realise they weren't frost, frost tolerant, so we'll see. Garlic, chi uh, wild garlic, not garlic chives, wild garlic, and they are the chives. Few of few. And this was catnip. So more herby stuff at the beginning here. This is bed that still needs to be cleaned out, but uh, absolutely needs to get on top of that. Didn't expect these to come through. These must be just some little onions. Oh, are they garlic? have to have a look at that the last of the leeks so i've left these in to see if they're going to get a little bit more girth on them um because they're not as big as the other ones and this celery here i'm just doing using it as a cut and come again and that's been fantastic now this here is um from down the bottom plot and i didn't realize it was here this needs potting on because it came from where the pigs are going so that got taken up herbs are doing well lavender's coming on i tidied this um this trough out so this is creeping time as is this and the last bucket of leeks so we've got leeks in the ground and a bucket of leeks there and just got tidied up a little bit really around here so we've got a few little of the uh the mini daffs what they're called now so anyway you know what i mean uh this is the horseradish so when that comes up it's it is there the roots there and it's doing well valerian valerian how do you pronounce it uh, mulberry tree so this should be good in that pot for a while then i've got um the leftover compost there's some more around here from that deal at wicks that i managed to uh to take advantage of and i'm not showing you in the shed because that is just a mess it's full of seeds well it's not a mess but there's seeds everywhere and then we've got the rosemary that i've just planted up that was in a little pot so that should thrive nicely now and the last of bits and pieces in this bed the kale and the Swiss chard may well survive for another season. But what I need to do, we've got nettles and things starting to come through. And I need to just get those taken out, spread a bit of muck on. We've got spinach in this bed. Everything else I've taken out really. There's some few little weeds there, but that'll take no doing. And some beetroot, um, which has been eaten by a mouse. 
but the pigs don't mind that. So this is going into the pigs as well. And this spinach greens for the chickens, whatever might be, whatever it might be used for. This bed is nice and empty. And this is our comfrey starting to come through. I think I'm going to transplant some of this um, down to the bottom plot because it totally takes over and it's a massive thug situation again. But at the moment, we can actually walk down there. There's some, um, Jack. this is called Jack by the Hedge, so just a wild edible. But yeah, at the moment we can walk down that path and the beds aren't looking too bad. Stephen's cut all of this back for me as well. All of this climate, it's not edible. And the cold frames are on the list of things to repair. So I stashed a few things there when I was tidying up at the weekend, but um, we need some glass or plastic so that they can actually act as a cold frame. I'm gonna be using those very soon. These just need a little bit of weeding. This is mint, nothing in any of these at the back. And this is mace. And these will be used for potentially leeks. I'm not gonna do carrots in them again, I don't think, but we'll see. And just another cold frame ready to be filled. There's some parsley that I found that I clearly had put down and forgotten about and it's thrived. It's a story of my life. Leave it alone and it'll work okay. Anyway, so that's that. There's the rest of the greenhouse. And now I'm going to head into the barn over there and get the food done for Lydia and go in and make some food for the family. Are you hungry? Oh, little man, you, you have to have something. We scatter things on the floor for him and it's a bit more of a game for him to pick up. <laughs> He's also got, um, sorry, Sonic, is my light in your eyes? So he's also got a treat ball, the pink ball over there, which we fill, um, or just put a little bit of treats in and he plays with that. Keep them entertained a little bit while they're inside. Well, here we go again. Welcome back just to another problem. This tree behind us has been rotten since we moved in six years ago. It's got a big hole in the back of it, which I'll show you when we go around. And we were advised then to really, it should come down, but it's a lovely tree and we've persisted and persisted and thought we'd wait. But every year the storms are getting worse and bigger and bigger chunks are falling off it. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we have a pool underneath it and a big, branch fell off and dented the pool and put a big tear in it so that was it final straw we thought this year it's gonna to have to come down it's like it's turned out turning out to be a massive mammoth task but we thought look on the bright side it'll keep us in firewood for we thought a long time but yet another problem i'll take you over there and show you just what we're dealing with at the minute So as you can see, we just already started taking it down. Yesterday, I took off, well, only three limbs, which seem to take forever. But this is the reason why we're taking it down. If you get a look in there, that goes right down, maybe it's two feet over there, and it just goes right up. It's just rotten inside. So we started off cutting these ones off, which they look pretty solid, but then, I'll show you these ones around here, which I'm just working on now. So this is one of the branches where it was hanging over the pool, along with these ones up here. We have the we have the pool here. I've just moved it while I do this, but this is the state of what's coming off. Them. It's just sponge. So it was only a matter of time before that came down. So we just crack on and come back and see how we're getting on. Maybe he's in a couple of days, because this looks like it's going to take a while. Well, it's Saturday now, and Stephen and I are working outside today. It's supposed to be a really nice day. There he is. You can see what his job's going to be. So it's supposed to be lovely weather, and it's not. It's terrible. Um, it's really, really windy. And, yeah, it's just not nice at all. But we're hoping that it's going to... I'll show you through it, but you can't see through the roof. Hence why it's clean in the greenhouse. It's absolutely filthy. So I'm going to be working in here. Um, 
uh, pricking out some of the brassicas. So there's absolutely hundreds probably of those. That's going to take me a little while. But that's good because I'll be able to just sit and get my head together and stir everything else I need to get done for the day. We've got about, I'm not joking, over 100 eggs. So you might have seen, I put something on TikTok and Instagram trying to, trying to get cool and, and be able to do these videos and things on there too. And I put kind of, you know you're a chicken mama when you've got this many eggs and they're absolutely filthy because this time of year they're just standing all over them. Anyway, so I need to get something done with those. So I think I'm going to make a massive quiche for lunch. And yeah, I need to do... I need to figure that out, I need to spend some time in the kitchen, but I've just been so tired on the night, excuses, excuses. So Steve's gonna get on cleaning this greenhouse. I'm gonna prick these plants out and give them a new home. They should be okay in the greenhouse. We're not expecting too many below freezing or any below freezing nights um, over the next few weeks anyway, I'll obviously keep an eye on the weather. So yeah, good to go, busy day ahead. My parents are coming to pick up their chicken. I'll explain more about that later, potentially. Hopefully I'll remember. And Stephen is actually proper small holders task. Um, somebody on another farm has had a, an issue with a sheep. So he's gonna go and help them with that. Uh, essentially, I'll, be, I'll spare the gory details, but what it means is that it's a, it's a healthy animal that we can put into the freezer. So especially with the, where things are at the moment, we're not wasting a thing. Um, so we'll be getting some of the meat there to help uh, us in our freezer and it helps them out because the expense of other things at the minute is, is through the roof. So yeah helping out a friend and, oh, I'm getting shouted. Knife. My knife? You must borrow my knife. So yeah, helping out a friend and getting something back in the meantime, which is, we wouldn't ask for anything back, but it was offered, so that's fantastic. This is what I'm working with, oops. Little baby plants, so I'm gonna crack on because he's already started and I'm gonna be made to feel guilty if I don't get busy. <laughs> Well, I've made a quiche, I'll show you it in just a second. I couldn't video what I did with it because, sorry about the light. Um, my parents came round and I was busy chatting away with them whilst I put the quiche in. So it's been basically bottom of the fridge stuff. So we've got all of these eggs that I started telling you about. I mean, this is just some of them. I've just given a full tray to my mum. There's another tray under there and there's a bucket full literally outside. Um, sorry about the hair, it's kind of a bit windy, a bit messy. And yeah, so we've got spinach, mushrooms, tomatoes, bacon. I didn't have any cheddar cheese, so I put Parmesan in. Will that be okay? I had some cream left over, put a lot of um, pepper in, and I didn't put any garlic in or anything like that. Um, but I think, so this will be kind of like a breakfast quiche. Sounds good. Should be lovely. That's going to be about another, it's in the agar at the minute, about another 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to go back outside and see what I can get up to out there whilst that's finishing and then Stephen's off to do that lamb or the sheep um, after lunch. I've got a lot of barn jobs that I need to get done. Um, now the pigs are down the bottom, I think we're doing a different video on that, but if not, I'll show you a little snippet in this one anyway. I've got all of the where they were in the barn to clean out, um, which shouldn't take too long. And then we need to move, you know, the straw and the hay that was at, potentially at the beginning of this video. What did I do with that footage? That needs to go where the pigs were in the barn to get nice and tidy in there because it's a bit of a mess in there. The horse has had um, pulled some of the straw bale to bits because uh, yeah, there was a bit of a disaster in there the other night which involved a spilling of a full bucket of water. Right, I'm gonna crack on. Excuse Stephen, me noisy as always. These are the variety of outdoor tomatoes. Let me do that instead of pulling my face in. Um, outdoor girl, that I'm gonna saw this year. So I'm literally, I've waited to put these in until now. Uh, my other tomatoes went in the beginning of February, I think it was, but these will just grow on so quick and my house will become taken over by them if I grow them and um, started them earlier. And I need to wait until after our last frost, which is the end of May. So we had a frost 27th of May a couple of years ago and it, it wiped out a lot of my fruit trees. So I knew because the blossom was on them and it just killed them off. Um, but these guys are going to go in the bottom plot, um, where we, uh, next to where the pigs are actually, where they're outside now. So we grew in there for the first time last year, learned a lot about the soil down there. But a big, long line of tomatoes. I don't know how many I'll get in, but I, I want to get a lot in because we absolutely love fresh tomatoes and I use them to, to preserve and to do all sorts with, to bottle them, to can them, whatever you want to call it, to preserve them. And this year is going to have to be a good year for growing our own and preserving. There's too much 
going on in the air at the minute, in the world at the minute. Um, we need a bit of food security. Don't wanna get too deep into that really, but this is um, extra tomatoes going in for outside. I don't wanna overcrowd the greenhouse, so we've changed our mind about what we, we were gonna put in um, beds all along the bottom here instead of using pots, but we're not gonna do that this year, we don't think. Um, we're gonna to continue to use the pots this way, just, just this year, just for one reason or another. But anyway, I don't wanna overcrowd inside, but Outdoor Girl have always done me fantastic outside. So I'm gonna get these in now and then get them away. These will go into the propagator inside the house so that we, while they germinate, and then they'll stay in the house in kind of a ambient temperature. Although the price of oil at the minute, it's not gonna be that warm for that long, but that's another subject. We'll get into that another day. So my plan is to throw this around that branch up there, tie it to the back of that little tractor there, yank it down and pull it so it doesn't fall off the fence. That's the theory anyway, so let's see how it goes. Thankfully no injuries. Well in the barn we had a bit of an accident the other night so Jack was filling up the sheep's water which is now over there there and it was just behind me when he went to put it in somehow missed and knocked the bucket and spilled it all over the floor so that clean bit of floor you can see behind me is where it ended up meaning that we've had to quickly shift some strong things out of the way because honestly it was like just everywhere there wasn't that much just a bucket and it was just flooding everything it was ridiculous so what i'm doing i'm just sweeping up um i've put the shavings bales that we've got left there there's two more here or three and i'm just going to try and get tidied up a little bit because i'm just waiting for stephen to finish outside with the chainsaw and he's just snapped at the fence with the tree that he's took down but anyway he'll fix it i'm sure so i'm just going to get the barn tidied up a little bit because I've got the messiest job. Well, it's not the messiest, that's totally exaggerated. And I've got to clean up the pig muck. This is called clean straw that they were using. And this is their pen, where all these straw bales that we've got dotted around the barn at the minute are gonna go behind me once this has been cleaned out. I'm not sure I'll get time to do that tonight, but that's like sort of today and into tomorrow's job. The horses need to go out and stretch the legs, but it's not safe to get them out at the minute because Stephen's on the chainsaw. So I'm just going to get the barn tidied up a little bit in the meantime. Well, I'm now in the shed with my vegetable garden diary and a nice mug of tea. And I'm just going to wrap it up there, guys. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'm going to get my seeds sorted and get all of those organised for what I need to get in for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to write some jobs in the veg garden diary because now that they're like, now that the nights are getting lighter that was a mouthful i can hopefully get out after work and get plenty done here as well so i need to get there's a, a really really long list of things to do so i need to get those organized prioritized um but first of all absolutely need to go through the seeds so i know where i'm stomping with them otherwise all of this is pointless because we won't have anything to grow so thank you for hanging out with us hope you've enjoyed this kind of different video with a little bit of everything going on take care and we'll catch you soon <coughs> Hello my lovelies.